Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering infective endocarditis. Now, before we get started, please, you know I'm about to ask you, like this video so you don't forget. Like it now, you know you're going to love it. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. All right, let's get started. So infective uh, endocarditis, look at what it says. Infective endocarditis, it used to be known as bacterial endocarditis or subacute bacterial endocarditis. This is an infection of the inner lining of the heart. Hello, endo, E-N-D-O, that's the inner lining, right? Endo carditis, endo, inner lining, card, heart, itis, inflammation of due to what? Infection, endocarditis. And it generally involves the valves. Let's keep going. Let's look at the pathophysiology. Organisms, bacteria, pathogens can enter the bloodstream from any site of a localized infection. So the patient can end up getting endocarditis from any site of infection in the body. It usually occurs from routine exposure to bacteria that's associated with daily activity, something as simple as brushing your teeth. So you're brushing your teeth, but there are going to be pathogens on your toothbrush, and those pathogens can travel to the site. So brushing the teeth, although it also can occur after procedure procedures such as dental work, invasive procedures where the bacteria, the pathogens are being introduced into the body involving the GI and genital urinary tract, cardiac surgery, et cetera. The lesions can involve adjacent tissues such as aortic and mitral valves, and they can break off and embolize. Whenever something embolizes, that means it's, 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 um, it's a foreign body that's now moving, okay? And it can embolize elsewhere, especially in the spleen, kidney, and CNS. Let's talk about signs and symptoms. Look at this box. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'll go over the ones that I put a star next to and I wrote NCLEX. The reason for that, when it comes to NCLEX, ATI, HESI, if you get a question about bacterial endocarditis, most likely it's going to be a select all that applies. It's going to be one or all of these clinical manifestations. So you do have to be aware of them. But I don't write your test, guys. Make sure you know everything in this box, but I'm just going to focus on the ones I put a star next to. Look at what it says characteristic findings caused by extra cardiac emboli formation. Splinter hemorrhages, these are thin black lines that can be seen under the nails. Oster nodes, these are red painful intradermal nodes found on the pads of the phalanges. Janeway lesions, these are painless hemorrhagic areas on the palms and soles. And petechiae is found on the oral mucous membranes. And I put star next to it, NCLEX. Make sure you know this. Let's keep going. Diagnostic test, definitive. That means beyond a shadow of a doubt, the way that we know 100% that what we're dealing with is infective uh, endocarditis, definitive diagnosis rests on the growth and identification of the causative agent in the blood. Us actually identifying that actual agent. Look at this, at least three blood cultures are drawn at different times to aid in the diagnosis. So we don't depend on just one culture, wait for that one culture to grow and say, okay, this is infective endocarditis, at least three, and drawn at different times, not different times, not from that, um, that one sample from that one time. Um, here we are. Vegeta vegetations on the valve and abnormal valve functions can often be visualized by echo. They can actually see those vegetations. And when you see them say vegetations, they're talking about those clumps of the bacteria or the pathogens. They clump up together and that's what we call the vegetations. A diagnosis of culture negative infective endocarditis is made when the patient has an echocardiographic or clinical evidence of IE, but no organism can be cultured. So what they're saying is the patient can also be diagnosed with infective endocarditis without the culture. But look at what it says. We have no culture or maybe the culture is negative. So we couldn't um, absolutely identify it. But look, when we do the echocardi um, echocardiogram, or we can see clinical evidence of it, even though the culture did not grow it or that culture was negative. Therapeutic management. Treatment should be instituted. What does it say, guys? Immediately. We don't play with this. We don't take our time because I want you to think about this, guys. This is an infection that's what? In the bloodstream, okay? This is the inner lining of the heart. That means it can travel everywhere. This is very serious. Treatment should be in instituted immediately and it consists of administration of high doses of antibiotics. 
very high doses of antibiotics is going to be given intravenously because it's got to go all over the body for two to eight weeks. Not two to eight hours, not two to eight days, two to eight weeks. The blood cultures are taking periodically to evaluate the response to the antibiotic therapy. We want to make sure that these high dose of antibiotics that we're giving the patient is actually working. Prevention involves administration of prophylactic antibiotic therapy to high risk patients before dental procedures and associated with high risk for entry of organisms. That's very important. So if someone's already at high risk, something as simple as a dental procedure that can introduce pathogens into that patient's body and they will go straight to that site of infection where those vegetations are and be even worse. Drug of choice. Drug of choice for prophylaxis given one hour prior to procedure includes, you need to know this list, guys, amoxicillin, ampicillin, and clindamycin in penicillin allergic patients. Quality outcomes. We want to prevent this from happening in high-risk patients with antibiotic prophylaxis. Any patients that are going to have an invasive procedure, such as a dental procedure, they need to be on antibiotics um, ahead of time early recognition and treatment. Look at care management. Nurses counseled the parents of high-risk children concerning the signs and symptoms of endocarditis and the need for prophylactic antibiotic. This is like the second or third time within two paragraphs, they talked about the um, prophylactic antibiotics. You need to know this. It's important that all children with congenital or acquired heart disease maintain the highest level of oral health to reduce the chance of bacteremia from oral infections. So it's very important that you teach the patient and the parents the importance of oral hygiene. They have to brush your teeth at least twice a day. They have to floss because that patient can't afford to have food stuck between the teeth, right? And what happens? That food sits there and it festers and bacteria starts to grow. And that bacteria that starts to grow in their mouth will travel from their mouth and go directly in the bloodstream to that heart valve or where those vegetations are located. Okay. Without unduly alarming them, the nurse stresses that any unexplained, here are your signs and symptoms, fever, weight loss, or change in behavior, such as lethargy, malaise, anorexia, must be brought to the healthcare provider's attention. Treatment of endocarditis requires long-term, you saw that guys, weeks of IV therapy, long-term parental drug therapy. Boom. There's your infective endocarditis. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, guys, this was a short video. I got straight to the point. Uh, let me know what you thought about this video about infective endocarditis. Let me know if there's anything that you'd like to see me cover that I haven't done so already, or you'd like to, me to discuss it um, more extensively. Don't forget, almost every day you guys can catch me covering different types of nursing questions on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching this video, and you guys will catch me on the next video.